Expected. This was based uh, near the small desert community of Yucca Valley. That's up east of San Bernardino, uh, not far from Palm Springs. Uh, interestingly, this same uh, community had felt a couple of fairly strong quakes last night, just uh, uh, about six hours before uh, this latest one, this big one. Damage reports are still coming in, and some of these desert communities, as you noted, are reporting things like trailers off their uh, foundations, and we have had some reports unconfirmed that roofs have caved in on some small buildings. Some radio stations were knocked off the air. But again, there are no confirmed reports of any injuries or um, damage beyond that. And that is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, but part of it can be attributed to the time of day this happened, 5 in the morning, and also the fact that um, this is, these desert communities are very sparsely populated. Again, however, it was strong enough so that it was felt in Phoenix area, in Las Vegas. There are reports from southern Utah that they were shaken up there. And, of course, people in Los Angeles uh, had a very rude awakening this morning. And uh, they are now experiencing a few uh, uh, aftershocks. And now we're going to listen to what some of the people who felt this this morning had to say about it. And, uh, what happened to you when the quake hit? Uh, just jumped out of bed. It got under the, you know, the the doorway and uh that i think the thing about this one is is that uh is that it lasted so long i think you know it seemed like it wasn't going to stop i kept moving away thinking it was that was it but it kept going was, i think that was the scariest part for me how did it compare to other quakes you've been in um well this one was just uh well the the last one i really remember was the one in october a few years back and it was uh i think it was santa Ana or whittier uh, quick and it uh, that w it was jolting but it was quick and uh, this one you know I started seeing flashes outside uh, quite a few flashes outside I'm on the third floor here and uh, that kind of frightened me too and you know you got reports of fires immediately so I thought maybe there was going to be a little more damage this time than the last time uh, I noticed you're outside your building uh, were you concerned staying inside um, yeah, a little bit. Um, it's kind of a, it's an old building. It's great. It's a good building. It's just, uh, it's older and uh, besides everybody else is down here drinking coffee. So I <laughs> go. And it was a very scary quake for a lot of people, but damage was relatively light. Uh, the police in Palm Springs now are telling us that most of the damage seems confined to a small desert community called Landers. That's about 50 miles northeast of Palm Springs. And again, we will bring you uh, updated information on this quake just as soon as we have it. But so far, uh, what we know is that it was about 7.4, based out in the desert, uh, about two hours' drive east of Los Angeles, and that it shook a lot of people up, but damage is light, and uh, we have no reports of any injuries at this time. And McDermott in Los Angeles, thank you very much. When we talked to Kay Shedlock of the U.S. Geological Survey just a few minutes ago, she said that uh, there are continuing aftershocks from this earthquake, and apparently uh, that is confirmed uh, in Mira Mesa, California. April Holder's on the phone right now. April? Hello? Are you still feeling these aftershocks? Yes, we are. How many? Um, there's been two in the last, uh, I'd say about 20 minutes. How severe? Well, the first one wasn't so bad, but the second one kind of got like a little bit more stronger. What about the initial quake? How strong was that where you are? Well, it looked, well, I was sitting in my living room and it woke my, my son up. And both uh, living room walls were like going back and forth shifting. And when I was looking outside, the pool water was just flushing out of the, the um, pool. And the trees were just swaying back and forth. and cars were moving back and forth and it, it put them um, on the outside of our building that's like chipping and it's got a big huge crack on the side of our back wall. All right, April Holder in Mira Mesa, California. Uh, they say that in Palm Springs there were two reports of damage. They say there was a rock slide and there was also a fire in a condominium. Richard Ryan is in Palm Springs. What more can you tell us, Richard? Uh, we've been getting aftershocks probably about every uh, few minutes since the main quake around five. Uh, they've been very steady. We've had some strong aftershocks. Uh, the main quake, of course, was <laughs> very damaging and scary, to say the least. Uh, shelving units in my home fell. Uh, pictures fell off the wall. And it went for, it felt like, close to a minute. But, uh, like I said, we've been getting aftershocks all along. I've heard a lot of sirens. Uh, I don't see any smoke around, but uh, Palm Springs is mostly a one-story community, so you're not going to get any high-rises. But, uh, 
we've had uh, quite a few aftershocks since. Richard, how long has it been since the last aftershock? Uh, about two minutes. About two minutes. All we've been right. Getting aftershocks steadily about every three, four minutes. And they're pretty severe. Uh, well, every now and then they get bad, but uh, not like the main quake. Nothing even close to the main quake. Richard, thank you very much. That's in Palm Springs, California. Let me take take the time right now to. Uh, thank uh, all of you who have called us here at CNN to give these uh, telephone reports. Uh, they are most valuable, not only to us, but uh, the people in uh, the southwestern part of the United States, giving them the opportunity to know just what is going on and what is happening. We do appreciate it. And we'll be back with more of our live coverage right after this. You get to go to Asia on business for two weeks. I'll try to call you every day. Try? It's not always easy overseas. Well, I'm going to make it easy for you. USA Direct. AT&T USA Direct service. Another way AT&T can help you from practically anywhere. Every country you're going to has a special number. You just dial it and get right back here to an AT&T operator. And more importantly, me. For a free USA Direct information card, call 1-800-874-4000. One athlete, ten events. The energy to go further in not just one, but many arenas. At Texaco, we share that energy in all that we do. The energy to create innovative products like System 3 gasoline. The energy to lead the way in exploration, conservation, alternate energy. The energy to go as far as we can, and then go even further. Although most human beings instinctively join herds, there are those who simply don't look for safety in numbers. For this rare breed, we introduced the 93 Mazda 626ES with a V6, an airbag, and ABS. Designed by the new Mazda, a company known for doing things differently. For drivers who feel the same way. The all-new Mazda 626. On CNN Tomorrow, what will bring women to the polls? Who will win their vote on Morning News? Then on Cryer and Company, the abortion battle, should a husband have the right to know? All tomorrow on CNN. When you get a report of 7.4 on the Richter scale from an earthquake, you would imagine there would be widespread damage. Well, so far, we have had precious little indication of any damage of that magnitude, except in certain towns close to the epicenter. Towns like Joshua Tree in sparsely populated desert areas and also in Landers, California. CNN's Ann McDermott is in our Los Angeles bureau right now. And as, as people are now going through the hours past the initial earthquake, and uh, also going through uh, the aftershocks. What are they supposed to deal with now? What are, the, what are their main concerns? Well, for law enforcement officials, the concerns are checking bridges and overpasses and other structures along the freeways, making sure there's no cracks in them. Uh, very early this morning, uh, when it was still dark out, I heard uh, police helicopters overhead, police and fire helicopters, and uh, I have since heard reports that they were checking area dams and reservoirs looking for cracks. And uh, in the Los Angeles area, everything uh, was pretty sound. They found uh, no damage of any kind. As you noted, most of this damage was uh, left to the little desert communities uh, right near the epicenter of the quake, uh, Yucca Valley, uh, near Joshua Tree, Landers. Um, fortunately, damage there was even minimal. We are talking about communities where the buildings are only one story high. And also, it's important to note that uh, California building codes are very strict because of earthquakes so that there is that much in their favor. Some of the damage reports we're hearing are trailers knocked off their foundations. And we have heard that um, one building had a roof collapse, but so far, fortunately, we have had no reports of any injuries. And this is amazing, considering we had a 7.4 earthquake. However, uh, as we've said again and again, this was a sparsely populated area. Also, it was the dawn hours. Most people were home. And uh, although it was a very scary experience for people, a very scary experience for people all over, because it was felt throughout the West, uh, Phoenix, Las Vegas, parts of Utah, down by the Mexican border. Fortunately, that's all it was for many, most, 
a scary experience. Damage is still light, but we are still getting reports in, and we will keep you updated as we get those reports. And you talked about uh, Joshua uh, Tree. Uh, we're getting a precious few reports from Joshua Tree, and apparently one of the reasons is because the, uh, the phone lines are down in that area, which is uh, certainly understandable, considering uh, that it was uh, practically right in the epicenter. And uh, when I talked to a member of the California Highway Patrol earlier this morning, he said that so far as he could tell, Initially, there were no indications of uh, highways being damaged or bridges. Uh, but one would think that as we get into the morning hours here and people planning to go places, go out and do things, may it not be a good suggestion for people to be very careful? Well, I think that's, that's always true after an earthquake. And, and you will see people on the freeways in Los Angeles being very careful. I have seen this many, many times in the aftermath of a quake, people approaching an underpass uh, slowly, and then they speed up as they go under that overpass. However, um, uh, police uh, and fire officials, sheriff's departments, all kinds of law enforcement, emergency personnel, they do check these things out very, very carefully because that's one of their major concerns. And so far, we have not heard that there are any problems with uh, any of these structures in Los Angeles area. All right, Anne McDermott in Los Angeles. Chris Harris is in Idlewild, California. Chris, uh, I talked to a gentleman a little while ago who said that the aftershocks continue and continue and continue, and that uh, some of them are pretty strong. Is that your experience, too? We just had one two minutes ago. Okay. I mean, we had a serious one. They've been going on uh, since, the, since the earthquake took place. So we're not far from Palm Springs, or from Landers, where I guess the epicenter is, in the Joshua Tree area. But this is a, an isolated community, it's a mile high. Uh, to get to it, whether you go by way of Hemet, California, or Banning, you have to go through a lot of um, winding areas where there are a lot of rocks. So nobody knows what's happening, but it's, it's the continuous aftershocks that we keep having. How far are you from Los Angeles? Uh, We're approximately, I would say, 126 miles. 126 miles, all right. And uh, we're, we're uh, a mile high. So it's, uh, it's an isolated community, but the, the strange thing about it, and I've lived in California all my life, I was born here, I've never experienced anything where it was uh, continuous. All right, Chris, uh, excuse me, I don't want to interrupt, but uh, we are now getting uh, live pictures from Compton, California. Here you get an indication of uh, at least uh, one building that uh, had some damage. Uh, looks like firefighters on the scene there. Uh, fighting uh, what looks like uh, a fire that uh, broke out after uh, the roof of a house collapsed. All right. Uh, again, uh, the things... Chris, are you still on the line? Apparently not. All right. We shall continue with more of our special coverage right after this. Some people buy a prestigious German motor car just to spend and make a big impression at the curb. Not so Volkswagen Passatos. For them, European driving's a thing and half of Nugum's the word. And as for making an impression, well, nothing impresses a valley more than a man who knows the value of a buck. Watch it here and understand it here. Watch it here and understand it here. Ever get the feeling the world is moving too fast? How can you keep up with all that's happening? New discoveries, new technologies, new ideas, an explosion of knowledge changing the way you'll live and conduct business in the 1990s. How can you keep up, stay informed, understand? For more than two million readers, the answer is Scientific American, the world's foremost science magazine. And now a trial issue can be yours free without obligation. Scientific American is fascinating, informative, always new and exciting, filled with dozens of colorful photographs, drawings, and diagrams to make complex subjects clear. Call now for your free trial copy, then decide. Accept a one-year subscription, 11 more issues, 12 in all for just $19.97 or cancel owe nothing and keep your trial issue. But if you do subscribe, you'll get two special gifts. 
this parchment replica of Scientific American's first issue dated 1845, and this impressive collection of articles by Nobel Prize winning scientists, including Albert Einstein. Remember, the 1845 issue and the Nobel Prize winner's collection are both free when you subscribe. Call for your free issue without obligation. The number is 1-800-635-3400. That's 1-800-635-3400. People of Southern California and people in Nevada and Arizona and elsewhere are beginning to realize they've had quite a jolting morning. An earthquake of the magnitude of 7.4 on the Richter scale uh, rumbled through that area early this morning, about 5 o'clock uh, Pacific time. These are the first pictures we've received from the area. This is Compton, California, which is right near uh, Los Angeles. Uh, certainly uh, uh, away from the epicenter, uh, which uh, the epicenter being... Uh, in the desert area not far from Palm Springs. One of the uh, uh, people at a radio station in Southern California have described this earthquake as a gentle giant and uh, it, it probably is a most accurate description uh, considering the magnitude and what we are uh, hearing so far is a, a lack of severe damage uh, to some of the areas. Uh, and McDermott talked to this a short while ago and said probably one of the reasons for that is that the epicenter was in the desert area. Now, Joshua Tree, which is right near the desert area, uh, is one of the areas that has been heavily hit. Let's listen to this from Compton. Harbor, Santa Monica interchange there. And you're sure this is as a result of the Tembler? Uh, no, that's what we're not sure of. Um, it's just coincidental that two fires would loom up at the same time here, but at this point we can't be sure exactly if it's earthquake-related. Okay, I'd like to ask Hal and Jan... Uh, Helen, Jen, I'm sorry, Helen, Stan, as I, as I watch here on Channel 5, whether we have had uh, any reports of structural damage of any kind at any of the major universities around Southern California, many of which are composed, many of their buildings of brick at Cal State LA, UCLA, USC. Have you had any reports of that? Uh, Larry, at the moment, we've had no reports whatsoever. And as you heard a few moments ago, we had Captain Steve Ellenswell on from Los Angeles County. And they have completed their uh, survey of uh, damage in their particular areas, and uh, no major damage was found. Also, we're expecting, in fact, we have Jim Wells uh, just about ready uh, on the line from L.A. City Fire Department. And uh, the reports are, after the uh, fire engines have made their sweep in their initial areas, uh, no major damage. So it's very encouraging from these uh, reports we're getting from uh, Los Angeles officials that it uh, looks as if Los Angeles has uh, uh, survived this uh, major quake uh, without major structural damage. Okay, uh, what about reports from the Civic Center, from UCLA, USC? All of those uh, seem to be pretty good, Larry. Uh, affirmative. Affirmative. Okay, and, that's, good uh, to, that's good to know. And John, from your, your vantage point up there, everything is pretty good, correct? Uh, Roger that. It's Dave, and uh, yeah, everything looks good from here, Stan. Just very isolated. This one fire here and the one over by the Coliseum is the only thing we can see at this point. And okay, I think any reports on freeway overpasses or underpasses? Uh, from my vantage point, as I was driving in, I saw Highway Patrol uh, working each bridge one at a time, and uh, they were checking, but to, to our knowledge, we have no reports of damage at this time. And I think, Larry, as, as you remember from all the quakes that you've covered, what we're talking about is the, the visible damage, the structural damage. Uh, you, you know, in each individual home, the, with the shaking we had, that uh, a lot of very valuable items were shaken off of uh, 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 shelves and bookcases, and uh, there would be a lot of okay, damage there. of that type. So this is uh, what we're going to be discovering. Uh, this is still a very e evolving, uh, this is a very evolving situation. Uh, Sky 5 now uh, is going to another fire. So uh, a moment ago, uh, Dave said it was an isolated fire, and now they found another one, so he's going to be checking that out. I think it's important that we remember in these early stages after a quake uh, that there will be a lot of information coming in and out, and the thing w is developing. So we don't have the complete picture. We don't have the full story at this moment, and that's what we're trying to get. So there will be... And that's understandable. That, by the way, is our CNN affiliate KTLA. Uh, the information still coming in, some of it uh, uh, differing from reports that uh, we've had earlier, but as, as the day gets brighter 
in, uh, on, in the western part of the United States, uh, they're able to see more and learn more about that earthquake that hit this morning. And we shall continue bringing you this information right after this short break. The last thing the average person wants is the average car. That's why the new Mazda brought you the return of the pure sports car, the all-new RX-7. And the return of the Roadster, the Miata. That's why our 626 feels personal. And our MX-6 feels timeless. It's why every Mazda will fulfill its promise in a way no other car can. I love being naughty. Especially when I can get away with it. I could drive at night. Less fat so I can indulge in sinful fudge. Real vanilla. Mm. Pure, true taste. I feel like I'm cheating. But I'm not. What a shame. All natural Briar's light frozen dessert. So real, you can taste it. radio station in Southern California calls it a gentle giant. Whatever you want to call it, it's being described as one of the most powerful earthquakes to hit the United States uh, this century. It rocked Southern California at about 5 o'clock Pacific time this morning. Jolts were felt hundreds of miles away, but in spite of the magnitude, the U.S. Geological Service says the quake has caused minimal damage. Uh, even with these pictures you're seeing right now from Compton, California, the fact of the matter is that in the major areas, the major build-up areas of Southern California, and I'm talking about places like uh, San Diego and Los Angeles, uh, there was precious little damage. The areas that did get damage, as far as the reports we're receiving, are places like Landers, California, Joshua Tree, California. These were right near the epicenter of this earthquake. The quake, by the way, registered 7.4 on the Richter scale, caused some damage to buildings, knocked out power in some areas. A fire and a rock slide uh, resulted from the quake in Palm Springs, but again, no reports of injuries. In fact, we haven't received reports of injuries from anywhere. Right now, uh, we're going to bring back uh, Steve Koch. Steve uh, spent a lot of time in Southern California before he joined us here in Atlanta at CNN. He knows the area well, and he's experienced these earthquakes. Steve? Thank you, Ralph. Yeah, a lot of action in Southern California, a lot of reasons why we're having earthquakes. We'll begin, first of all, why does uh, earthquakes occur across the world? Well, if you can uh, picture the Earth as being a series of plates, some are small, some are large. Now, in California here, in the Pacific Ocean, where I'm standing here, is known uh, the, uh, as the Pacific Plate. It is independent of all the other plates. Now, they occasionally do bump and rub into each other. Now, half of Southern California and draw a line here around San Andreas and moving southward just like this. This half of California is in the Pacific Plate. It is moving northward at a rate of about one inch per year. Now, the rest of Southern California, the desert areas here, and most of the rest of North America are on the North American Plate. It is floating southward, if you will. So the two of them are rubbing right here. And what causes an earthquake is the two bumping into each other and friction builds up and they don't seem to move. Well, every once in a while they do let go and there's that jolting move or a, a series of a quick move, if you will. Now, it could be just a half an inch or an inch, uh, perhaps even two feet. We've had reports of that shifting. So that's what causes the earthquakes. Now, some of our viewers have been calling in this morning saying it was a rolling motion. Some say that it was more of a jolt, a sharp jolt. Well, there's two reasons uh, for that. One depends on your proximity or how close you are to the actual epicenter. Uh, and uh, that will give you a different feel. For instance, if you're in a mountainous area as opposed to a flat area, you'll get a different feel from the earth as it continues to move. Whereas uh, another big situation is just how the earth begins to let go. As we said, sometimes it may be just a slow, gradual release, and the aftershocks are continuing as the earth continues to settle in and eventually finds its place of rest. Uh, if it is a, just a quick move like that, you're going to get a different feel from the atmosphere or from the, from the earth itself, I should say. So that has been uh, the result of that. Now, being a 7.4 on the Richter scale out here in the deserts of Southern California, 
Also, because it's very generally very flat and there is some small, small hills, that's why Las Vegas and places like uh, Phoenix, Arizona have been able to feel this with such intensity. Weather-wise, it is another clear, sunny day. We saw on our skycopter from KTLA, sunny skies are promised over Southern California once again today. Temperature readings will be in the low 80s, so good weather to survey any damage that may have resulted from the earthquake. We'll be back later. Ralph? Steve, thank you very much. Once again, it was a 7.4 earthquake that hit Southern California, and uh, we are still getting few reports of any damages, especially in the build-up areas. These are pictures from Compton, California, uh, near Los Angeles. Uh, this is typical of the kinds of uh, things that have happened in that area. Uh, tall buildings swayed, uh, swimming pool water sloshed about, but other than that, uh, no reports of any serious damage and no reports so far of anyone being hurt uh, in this earthquake. We're going to continue to uh, talk with people in Southern California. Again, we appreciate all the phone calls we have received. Uh, this information, of course, very helpful, very enlightening, especially to the people in the region where this happened. And we'll continue with our special coverage in a moment. I'm Ralph Wenke. believe this? Volk Vision Centers has frames that are practically indestructible. If you thought Coke bottle lenses were the only solution to your prescription, look how thin Volk Vision is making them today. Tired of bifocal lines that make you look older? Try Volk Vision Centers invisible bifocals. Volk Vision Centers new high-tech frames are so light, well, you'll hardly know you're wearing them. Come see what's new in sight at Volk Vision Centers, eight convenient locations. Are you one of those people who had a bad experience last time you went car shopping? Well, it does happen, but never at the Auto Plaza in Winterset. Why? Because of our exclusive discount pricing system. We make it easy for you to buy cars, trucks, or vans. Discount pricing means you'll find the lowest price available anywhere on every GM and Chrysler Plymouth on our lot. There's just one price on every car, the lowest. So no hassles, no embarrassment, no nothing but low prices every day. So drive a little and save a lot. At the Auto Plaza in Winterset, nobody in Des Moines can touch our prices. You never know what kind of copier dealer you got until you have a problem. But when you call a Minolta dealer, hi, this is Bart Christensen of M&M Sales Company. How may we help you? You'll always have a dealer who makes service and response a number one priority. So if you buy a Minolta copier from us, we'll leave no problem unsolved and no question unanswered. Hobby enthusiasts of all kinds, from beginners to professionals, can find it all at Hobby Haven. It's the area's most complete selection of trains, airplanes, cars, and boats, plus paints, accessories, and more. Our knowledgeable staff will locate what you're looking for, answer your questions, and share their expertise. Since 1973, Hobby Haven has offered a tremendous variety of stock and a commitment to the public that keeps customers coming back time and again. Hobby Haven, located in Sherwood Forest Shopping Center. This is CNN. Good morning, I'm Ralph Wenge. A gentle giant trod on Southern California and other southwestern states before dawn today. That's what a radio station is calling a major earthquake that struck that region. The U.S. Geological Survey says the quake measured 7.4 on the Richter scale. The extremely strong quake rolled people out of their beds this morning. The quake was centered about 100 miles east of Los Angeles between San Bernardino and Joshua Tree. But the jolts were felt as far away as Phoenix, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada. CNN's Ann McDermott is in Los Angeles right now, and she joins us with the latest. Ann? Well, the giant is turning out not to be quite as gentle as we first thought, not with uh, some of the in, uh, damage reports coming in. We do have... Uh, one injury to report a heart attack uh, victim. We're not sure where, but they are attributing that to the quake. Also, we are hearing reports in Joshua Tree that the roof of a bowling alley collapsed. Now, here is Compton, California, a fire that authorities may 
th think may have been attributed to the quake. There are other fires in the desert communities closer to the epicenter. Apparently some mobile homes are on fire. Uh, five buildings in the Joshua Tree area collapsed. Uh, we have, again, no reports of injuries in regarding uh, some of these damage reports. We're also hearing that Route 247, 247 between Yucca Valley and Joshua Tree has been closed because of severe buckling there. They are also hearing problems in uh, the Pomona area and Santa Clarita. Some of those, uh, some streets in those areas have had some damage. Uh, in Victorville, that's up near the Barstow area, we are hearing reports of gas leaks, water main breaks, and in the little desert community of Landers, that is very near the uh, epicenter of the quake, we heard that there is a four-foot-wide crack that a car has fallen in. Again, not clear if there were any injuries involved in that. And now let's hear what some of the eyewitnesses to the quake had to say about what it felt like. Uh, it felt like somebody took a giant wrench and uh, adjusted the building. And, <coughs> excuse me, what was your first, <laughs> your first reaction? Did you, I noticed you're outside of your building. Uh... Uh, get out of this loft and down underneath it. I have a loft in my place. That's underneath it is my earthquake place. What, um, <clears throat> have you been through any other California earthquakes? or earthquakes. Mm -hmm. How did this compare? It felt like it came from a different direction and uh, it was more a constant shaking instead of the last, the last one felt like a giant snail coming out of the building just, you know, rolling by like a big roll, roller bearing or something coming out of the building. This one was different, it was a shaker. Well, I was asleep. It happened about five this morning and uh, I've been through enough now in California that the minute I felt that I was underneath the table in my kitchen just hugging it <laughs> and I'm on the top floor so the building was swaying it was going about it felt like three or four feet side to side how did this quake compare to the others that you've been through this is of the three or four I've been through this is this was about the best I think <laughs> that's the way to describe it because yeah it was we'll give it a 10 because when it was over I took the opportunity to leave the building because I thought usually I go back to sleep but not anymore so did you actually think maybe the building would come down, or what was going on? Uh, I was waiting for the windows to pop, actually, because I thought it was it was swaying that much. As, again, being on the top floor, and this is an old brick building, so it really gives. Uh, just jumped out of bed, got under the you know the the doorway, and uh, that I think the thing about this one is is that uh, is that it lasted so long. I think you know it seemed like it wasn't going to stop i kept moving away thinking it was that was it but it kept going it was, i think that was the scariest part for me how did it compare to other quakes you've been in? um well this one was just uh well the the last one i really remember was the one in october a few years back and it was uh i think it was a santa Ana or whittier uh quake and it uh that it was jolting but it was quick and uh this one you know i started seeing flashes outside uh, quite a few flashes outside. I'm on the third floor here, and uh, that kind of frightened me too. And you know, you got reports of fires immediately. So I thought maybe there was going to be a little more damage this time than the last time. And what we are hearing now is people are saying there have been dozens of dozens of aftershocks, and uh, as many as recently as just a couple of minutes ago. Ralph. And thank you very much. Uh, one of the things that Ann pointed out just a moment ago is the fact that we are indeed now receiving reports uh, from the region that uh, some of the roads have uh, buckled, uh, there is some pavement damage. And as uh, we get into the daylight hours in Southern California now, there is uh, every indication that anybody planning to drive, anybody planning any trip at all, should do so very, very reluctantly. Patty Coyle is in Oceanside, California. Patty, uh, we keep hearing reports that it's now about a uh, little over two hours since the original quake, and there are still reports of aftershocks. Are you still feeling them? Patty Coyle? Yes, we have. We've been feeling them now for... I mean, ever since it happened, pretty much, we've been feeling a little out. And this is an ocean side. We're Camp Pendleton. And uh, when it happened, I mean, the first thing you think of is the bed shaking, and you're looking around for a reason. And, I mean, this lasted to a point where my parents are here visiting from Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I, I jumped up out of bed, and I thought, it's an earthquake. And it just started getting worse and worse. And I'm like, I, I, I ran to the doorway, threw open the door, and I said, you guys, it's an earthquake. I'm trying to get them up. And... And uh, they came to the doorway, and we stood there and watched my chandelier in my house just swing. Patty, how severe are the aftershocks compared with the original quake? Um, the second one, we felt, we felt one right after. It was maybe a few minutes after. And then um, from then on, it's been maybe 
I don't know, every 20 minutes or so, but we just felt little ones. Um, nothing, nothing like the standing in the doorway there of the bedroom, looking at each other going, is this ever going to stop? It was just shaking and shaking, and the dog was barking, of course. That's a, that's a given, I think. But it was just, <laughs> I, I thought for sure, I thought for sure it was, but the house was going to come down. I don't know. We, we got up. Our cable was out. We didn't have any cable at all. There were reports of the radio stations said that a lot of the radio stations up in L.A. had gone out. So our cable went out. So we couldn't, as soon as we get you guys on, we got you guys on. But um, it, was, it, was a, it was pretty bad. It, scared, it really scared me. It really scared me. I can, I can say I felt, I felt some. And, and by the time you realize there are, there are earthquakes, you're kind of like, it's over. And after, but this one was, I had time. It was at least a minute. Patty, a daylight has now arrived in your area. Have you been able to get out and see if there's been any damage? Yeah, I have. I've been able to get out. Um, I, I don't see, we haven't seen any damage anywhere. I thought, I thought for sure it would have some cracks somewhere. But, because it, it really shook. It really shook. But, um, no, I haven't seen any, any damage. Like, people are up and out. And I don't see, you know, anybody, you know, I don't see anything here. Camp Pendleton, as I say, we live right here on Camp Pendleton. And um, the first report that came here was that it was near El Centro. <laughs> it was down south in, in uh, Arizona. But um, now that it's out in Palm Springs, we, I can see how it was that bad. Are your parents ready to go back to Pennsylvania? Oh, you bet. <laughs> My mom wasn't as scared as I was. I was, I was like, you guys, it's an earthquake. We got it. We get in the doorways. What? Where do we go? I mean, it was. It just kept going. It just really kept going. Have you yeah. talked to any of your neighbors? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I know my one neighbor's not home. I think probably picked a good time to be away. But um, no, I haven't talked to any of my neighbors yet. I'm looking around at the houses around here, and um, it doesn't really doesn't seem to be any damage. It was just uh, a never-ending. It was just a long minute. It was probably the longest minute of my life. <laughs> okay, Patty Coyle in Oceanside. Thank you very much. We've been telling you uh, this morning that uh, one of the severely damaged areas is Joshua Tree near the epicenter. We now, for the first time, have been able to uh, get a connection and we're able to talk to Shirley LaCourney. Shirley? Yes. What can you tell us? How bad is it there? Well, in Joshua Tree itself, down on the main highway, which is Highway 62, apparently there are several buildings collapsed. We're up, uh, I live up about five miles from there on a solid rock area, so our damage is mi minimal. However, um, our local radio station has been on the air, the FM station on a generator, and they're getting continuous reports from this immediate area. It's very bad. Uh, Landers, which is near the epicenter, I understand, many houses destroyed, uh, some by fire, some by the quake itself. Um, most of the businesses in Yucca Valley have had moderate to major damage. Um, we have...